question says that a positive edge triggered D flip flop is connected to a positive edge triggered JK flip flop as follows and the connection the details are given to you the Q output of the D flip flop is connected to both JK inputs of the JK flip flop while the Q output of the JK flip flop is connected to the input of the D flip flop initially the output of the D flip flop is set to logic 1 and the output of JK flip flop is cleared. Which one of the following is the bit sequence including the initial state that is generated at the Q output of the JK flip flop when the flip flops are connected to a free running common clock and we have to assume that j equal to k equal to 1 is the toggle mode and j equal to k equal to 0 is the state holding mode of the jk flip-flop both these flip-flops have non-zero propagation delays so these are the options that are given to you when uh, these two flip-flops are connected as told here and this question appeared in gate 2015 paper so First, we'll draw uh, the arrangement that has been indicated in this question. So initially, we have a D flip-flop. A D flip-flop is nothing but a delay flip-flop. Okay, then there is a clock and there is a JK flip-flop. The inputs J, K and connection to the clock so we are told that the q output of the d flip flop is connected to both j and k inputs okay and the q output of the jk flip flop is connected to the d input so it goes something like this all right so this is the arrangement that is told to you in the question and there is a common clock so the clock will be shown to you like this the common clock goes in both these flip-flops okay now you are stated that the initial values of the output of the D and JK flip-flops are 1 is here and JK flip-flop has the output as 0 since we have to consider the initial state while generating the output of the JK flip-flop so the output would contain a 0 so let's write down what the output will be generating here the first value in the sequence generated by the output of the JK flip-flop would be 0 because 0 is the initial state now let's see how things will work initially JK output is 0 so in the next clock cycle this 0 would be propagated to the D value and this one would be propagated to the input of J and K so what will happen this 0 goes here and since D is a delay flip-flop so this input would be reflected here all right Whatever is the input that will be the output and the previous one would be transmitted to J and K inputs. Alright, so I am cancelling this and since J equal to K equal to 1 is the toggle state. So since J K equal to 1 here, it will result in the toggling of the previous state. The previous state was 0. So now the new output would be 1. So the next in the sequence would be 1. Alright, now in the next corresponding cycle, here this one would be transmitted to this D. So this 0 would be removed and we would get 1 here. This one would make the output of D flip-flop to be 1. But this previous 0 would be transmitted to the two inputs J and K, this previous one. Okay, so the input of J and K would be 0. And since 0, 0 says that it is the state holding values, that means the output would be retained. The previous output that was 1 would be retained in this case also. And so the output would be 1 again. So I'm cancelling this previous one and I'm writing again a new one for this clock cycle. So this again generates a 1.
Now what happens? This one is again circulated back to the D input. So previous one is cancelled. A new one is written here. This one goes to the input. The previous Q input goes to the further inputs of J and K. So what happens here? This one causes a 1 to be set at the J input and a 1 to be set at the K input again. And since this one would cause the output to be 1, this previous one came resulted into the inputs to be 1, 1 again and therefore this would result in the toggling of the previous state. Okay, so I'll tell you again. Previously, the output of JK was 1. This one got transmitted here. Alright, since it got transmitted here, so the new input to D is 1. The previous value was, the previous output was Q which was equal to 1 here. So here this would be cancelled and again a 1 would be generated. Alright, and the previous 1 would be transmitted here which is 1 1 and this 1 1 would cause the toggling of this state which would now become 0. So this 0 continues. Okay, or the next output in the sequence is 0 here. Okay, now if you keep on executing this arrangement in this manner, you will see that the sequence that is actually formed is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0 and so on. Okay, so this is the sequence that would result when the JK flip-flop is connected to the D flip-flop in such a manner. Things to remember here are that when JK become 1, previous output is toggled. Toggled means from 0 it will become 1 and from 1 it would become 0 and when jk is 0, both of them are 0, previous output is retained. Okay, the same output is attained in the next cycle as well. Okay, now please remember here that we are only considering these two conditions of j and k being equal and not conditions like j equal to 0 and k equal to 1 or j equal to 1 and k equal to 0 because these conditions will never result in such an arrangement and why they will never result because the output of the d flip-flop goes into both j and k and both of them will have the same value and that same value could either be 0 or it could be 1. So this is how you will solve this question. I hope you understood the way to solve this question and what would be the answer. So marking the correct answer here the answer would be A in this case. The question states that consider a 3 gigahertz processor with a 3 stage pipeline and stage latencies as tau1, tau2 and tau3 such that tau1 equal to 3 tau2 by 4 equal to 2 tau3. If the largest pipeline stage is split into two pipeline stages of equal latencies, the new frequency is dash gigahertz ignoring the delays in pipeline registers. Alright, so since initially you are given that the frequency of the existing three stage pipeline is equal to 3 gigahertz and it is a three stage pipeline. So these frequencies are given as tau1, tau2, tau3 and they hold the relation as tau1 equal to 3 by 4 tau2 which is equal to 2 tau3. So let us equate these three values to a constant or to a value k. You can take it to be any variable. Now equating separately each of these three values to k. First when I equate tau1 to k I get a equation tau1 equal to k. When I equate this value 3 by 4 tau 2 equal to k, I get 3 by 4 tau 2 equal to k which is equal to which implies tau 2 equal to 4k by 3. Alright, this is a simple equation and I am 
just moving the values on the right hand side and when I equate 2 tau 3 equal to k I get tau 3 equal to k by 2 okay so these are the values in of each of these latencies in terms of k so out of these three we see that tau 1 is 1k tau 2 would be approximately 1.3k and tau 3 is 0.5k so this is the maximum latency and this would contribute to the actual frequency of the three stage pipeline so equating these two values the frequency and latency will convert the frequency and inverting it and equating it to the maximum latency we get 4 by 3k equal to 1 by 3 1 by 3 because 3 was the frequency and tau 2 this maximum value it out of the 3 is the latency so we have to invert this value I have inverted the value of frequency and now from this equation I get the value of k as 1 by 4 all right now this is this was the first part of the question the second part of the question says that if this three stage pipeline is split into two pipeline stages okay the longest pipeline stage is split into two pipeline stages so what was the longest pipeline stage this tau 2 in itself was the longest stage so when we split it i'll get now tau 1 equal to k okay i'll write it as tau 1 dash tau 2 dash as 2 by 3k tau 3 dash as 2 by 3k and tau 3 tau 4 dash as k by 2 so these are the new pipeline stages okay and out of these the maximum value is tau 1 dash equal to k so this value k is equal to 1 by 4 tau 1 dash is equal to 1 by 4 and this is the value that would be contributing to the value of the frequency of this new four stage pipeline so since this value is equal to 1 by 4 therefore the new frequency would be equal to the inverse of this value which is equal to 4 or 4 gigahertz all right so what will you fill here 4 gigahertz so this is a simple question you know need to know how pipelines actually work what are latencies and what is the frequency the relation between frequency latencies and how to get the values out of such questions so now coming to the second question the question is the stage delays in a four stage pipeline are 800 500 400 and 300 picoseconds the first stage delay which is 800 picoseconds is replaced with a functionally equivalent design involving two stages with respective delays 600 and 350 picoseconds the throughput increase of the pipeline is dash percent so what is actually throughput throughput is given to you by the formula 1 divided by the pipeline stage that has the maximum delay okay so I'm writing the maximum delay here this maximum delay corresponds to one of the pipeline stages out of all the stages present in a in the given n stage pipeline so here we have four stages and the maximum delay is given by the first stage which is 800 so what would be the throughput in the initial four stage pipeline where delays are 800 500 400 and 300 in case one or initially our throughput is one upon 800 all right and later when 
this first stage is replaced by a functionally equivalent design involving two stages. So what are our new delays? We have 600, 350, 500, 400 and 300. Okay. Now these are the new delays. So now in case of these, what would be the throughput? The throughput would be again 1 divided by the maximum delay that is present in these case and that is 600 here. Okay. So what is the percentage increase? Percentage increase is nothing but the new value minus the old value divided by the old value into 100. Alright. So what was the new, what is the new value? 1 by 600. What was the old value? 1 by 800. Divide this value by 1 by 800 and multiply it with 100. So you would approximately get an answer of 33.3%. Okay. So sometimes it is specified that you have to mention the answer up to a certain decimal places like two decimal places so please be careful and write the answer accordingly here in this case it is not mentioned so it is enough to calculate till a single decimal place so the answer in this case is 33.3 percent so both these questions involved direct formulas and application of such formula can gain you clear cut marks in your exams. Thank you for watching the video. If you understood these questions, please like this video and share it with your friends and tell us in this comment section below. How did you find this video? Subscribe to our channel of Easy Engineering Classes for more lectures on our preparation series and other computer science related subjects. Press the bell icon to get the latest notifications of our upcoming videos. Thank you.